we got Top Man with his net with his user who is an old man showing off his grandson uh digital top <coughs> which not gonna lie i like the idea until it gets a virus and we have to fix it and then uh i think if i'm remembering correctly the kid thinks land and mega man are so cool and the top isn't so much anymore so that, and then we got to get in league with this net battler society where the old man used to be a member and do some stuff for the members on Navi's. Some of them are to answer some questions and give one a back massage, which you just have to <coughs> repeatedly hit R1, R1, R2 most of the time in order to do this motion. And then afterwards we find out that our operator buddy has a twin. Does it hold any reference? Somewhat. They they kind of don't like each other a bit. And of course, they have them looking exactly alike, wearing the same clothes, just with different colors. And then afterwards, the grandkid thinks his grandfather is pretty cool and everything. So, pretty good ending. Again, not so much to do because I'm going to get through this entire list. Can we go back to uh, some of the lesser ones on the list, uh, guys? I mean, okay, okay. We've got Aquaman. <coughs> Two things. One, why the hell was a Big Bang Theory thing used as a joke here? And two, you don't make fun of Aquaman. I'm talking about this little squirt. Actually, that 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 that, that that's actually a pretty good stupid joke. So, um, kind of like in the anime. Oh, uh, I no in the anime. Oh, fuck it, I'm not doing it. Uh, his operator, uh, Suiko, I think her name is. I, I, I can't fully remember. <coughs> Basically has a bout of bad luck. Which sucks. And then Aquaman makes it a little bit worse. And then her brothers come around and she's got so much bad luck. And it's kind of all attributed to Aquaman a little bit. And yeah, I know in the anime they called him Spout Man, but yeah, Aquaman is just sounds better. So Aquaman also overhears the, her twin brothers of talking about getting rid of something and getting a new one because it doesn't work as well. And Aquaman, being the little crybaby that he is, goes into the net and starts to have a pout session where he floods the entire area. Great. But as the situation has been revealed, Land talks to the brothers and they were talking about a new dishwasher. Aquaman thought they were talking about him, so he wanted to scat, skidat, scat. We find Aquaman, we calm him down, we tell him the whole story, and we battle, and bad luck over. Again, not one of my favorites of the Double Souls, but the scenario is a little bit better than some of the other ones. Uh, some of the lower ones, so. <coughs> ah! Because I'm on, because I like to stick to my schedule and I like to get my videos done when I can. Thank you. Next up is a blast from the past of Mega Man Bow Network 3, as we've got Metal Man, one of the coolest badass navvies ever. I hate that they changed his name to Heavy Metal Man, which doesn't make sense. There's no other Metal Man in the series, so why change it? Yeah, some of the changes in that they did in the anime didn't make sense. Except uh, calling uh, Beast Man Savage Man. That, 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 I, I really enjoyed that one. 
So Metal Man is here. And his operator, again, I can't remember their names for the life of me. Who wants to challenge us in a rock-breaking competition. So it's one of those sections where the meter will go here. You have to hit it right where it goes and we'll break the rock. Pretty simple. Nothing too over extravagant. Nothing overtly stupid. Actually, yeah, all the all, all the overtly stupid ones we've kind of got through right away, which I'm kind of happy about. But yeah, we get we just break we just do a couple competitions, and uh, <coughs> yeah, uh, break some rocks for the competition for metal with Metal Man. We prove our toughness. And then we get metal, and then we fight him, metal soul, double soul, all that shindig. <clears throat> Next up is another blast from the past, if you guys remember it, from Battle Network 1. The only member of those optional bosses that were there in number one for no reason whatsoever, just to raise your difficulty. <coughs> we have Woodman. And his operator, Sal, who is an environmentalist at heart. And one other member is wants to push for radical usage, but Sal is against it. Woodman, being the kind-hearted dummy that he is, the Navi kind of talks him into this is this would help Sal's cause. Sal just doesn't want to get caught up in it, so convinces Woodman to cause some damage on the in the Yum Yum Land area, which yeah, kind of makes sense. I mean, again, Sal's always a nature lover, so. Having her be an environmentalist and some of the people being radicals and manipulating Woodman into working with them would actually work. And I would actually work. Oh my God, that sounded so stupid in my head. <clears throat> no, it, it sounded okay in my head, but it, it just sounds stupid. But yeah. So we, and throughout the entire area, the wood towers are popping up, popping up, popping up. So we got to stop them. By, well, we don't, no, we can't stop them. We just got to get through them, time it properly, and then go talk to Woodman, where he wood towers the other Navi, and I th want to say deletes him. I kind of wish that the anime would take more focus from what the games did. I mean, imagine that. If, I mean, we've been getting reboots and reboots of stuff for years to follow the original source. So, why not a petition to have the Mega Man Battle Network anime? They bring back some of the original voice actors, except for Kirby Morrow. Rest his soul. I love Elec Man. And do the scenarios from the games. Just... <coughs> Cut down the stuff that happened in uh in uh in uh, uh, season four if it, it would ever to happen. I mean, I think it would be pretty fun. Yeah, actually, this was an idea that just came up right off the bat. Bow Network anime, let's have it. So yeah, again, battle. Uh, Woodman apologizes. He's not in trouble, and all the actual supporters of Sal's comes to watch her fight and to cheer her on. Which, again, I love it when that happens. Next up, it's time to clap the thunder because we got Raul and Thunderman. Some awesome guys coming back from Battle Network 2. Ah, oh, Thunderman. One of my favorites. I love his <clears throat> design. It's just so fun. And Raul is such a badass in the anime, and he's a badass here. Even though mostly he's kind of a side a side boss and everything, so not really in the, in the story that much. But this one is great in the Netfrica area. We have a curse. 
on us. Remember what I said in the bomber one where you have to have your health super high or else you're screwed? Same thing here. We've been placed, a, someone's placed a curse on us. <coughs> so every time we enter the net, Mega Man's health will decrease as we go. So Raul tells us what to do. We have to find a cursed doll in the area and bring it back to Thunder Man so he can cleanse it. Not going to lie, that's actually pretty fun. It's it, it ties into Raul's heritage. It ties into a really shit game mechanic that if a lot of other games did it, a lot of people would hate it. But yeah, gr pretty fun. It, pretty good scenario. Really great to see Thunder Man and Raul again. I love them. <clears throat> Next up, we've got Windman, who, when it comes to wind bosses, he's right up there with some of the best. And his operator, I can't, I, I, I swear to God, some of them I can't remember their names to, for the life of me. <sighs> and plus, first off, here's the operator. Great character design. Really love the uh, the ornate that they've done it with the with the uh, with the dress wear. And here's Windman. This design is sick. Absolutely, it's sleek. It's aerodynamic. It's absolutely badass. So, what do we do with this guy? Uh well, for one thing, his operator kind of gets a little nervous, so she always takes a drink of her mineral water in order to calm her down. But after she drinks it, she gets a little funny. And, um... Uh, one of the animatronics that are in the park section, that's where this tournament is, <coughs> goes berserk again and tries to attack her. So we jack in, defeat the virus, and all's good. And then a little bit later, Windman is on the net causing havoc by creating cyber storms and everything. Yeah, so we calm him down after uh, after the operator tries to tell us of how to do it. He needs the the flute in or of uh, cyber flute to be played in order for him to calm down, which I get. And then after we defeat him, we find out the truth. What <coughs> she was drinking wasn't mineral water. It was sake, which made her drunk and made her a little crazy. This is a kid's game, right? <coughs> I mean, we have terrorism. We have almost killing people, eco-terrorists. Drinking, gangsters. This, this is a kid's game, yeah? But again, Windman. Great design, great scenario. And now we got to a we go to a fan favorite. We got from Mega Man's one, four, and five. We have Number Man. I swear to God, I giggle every time Number Man appears. He is such a fun navvy. And the fact that we got to control him in in a <clears throat> in Team Colonel for Battle Network 5. Just oh it was so fun. Uh finally we get to be the geeks this time. <laughs> what? I love weird fun characters. Shut up. So Number Man's whole shtick is, in this scenario, Higsby's going to drop out of the tournament because the shop hasn't been doing well and some jackass is going to be destroying it to put a scrub shop. Okay. Okay. But, so we help Higsby out by uh, 
by taking flyers and delivering them throughout the cyberverse, the cyber world, in order to give promotions. And then the, the asshole returns and... Number Man is locked in the cybernetic warehouse. Yeah, certain sections of the game you'll find that are locked off until you can do certain, uh, the scenarios. So, the guy's Navi, uh, locked Ma Number Man up into the warehouse. We have to free him. <clears throat> and then all the kids in the neighborhood bound together to kick this guy out and, and stay strong with Higsby Shop. Which I do, I love that. I love how small communities come together for a local shop that's about to be shut down or taken over by some jerk in TV shows and stuff. So I really, really love Higsby's scenario. And it's great to see him man up and everything for once. I mean, come on, Higsby. But again, like, full disclosure, this scenario is one of my personal favorites, but a bunch of others kind of beat it out on the list. But they're just, but it's still a great one. Still a great one. To see Higsby man up for once is always fun. <clears throat> Next up, we got Sparkman. And here's his operator. Again, can't remember these these ones. I mean, at least it's not a generic one, so there's a good there's a good thing. So Sparkman's operator is giving uh uh, upgrades for PETs. I mean, he's a he's a he's a technician, which not gonna lie, sounds pretty cool. <coughs> Until we and after he we do it, we try to test it out, and it turns out he's locked us out of our chip folder. Yeah, the folder that you used that you have equipped. To uh, the chips that you upgraded and done your folder. Uh, he gives you one that he's added. And we're locked out of changing it. So someone who is our opponent. Gives a free upgrade. But in turn sabotages us. Enter tournament show. Enter tournament scenario cliche here. So we got to find another guy to undo it and we get the guy to get the password in, which takes a lot of time if you don't know what it is. And it's kind of annoying. So then, yeah, the whole, that whole shindig, we beat up Sparkman and yeah, the guy ends up blaming Sparkman for the loss. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just get to the good ones because we got one, two, three, four, five, six left. So these are the top six. Number six is... Okay, look. I love these guys. I love them with a passion. In the anime, there were some of the best characters. And even in the games, there are some of the best. From four and five Team Proto Man. <coughs> We've got Rika and his partner in charge, Search Man, which is one of the coolest designs ever. This guy looks like he could take on Snake. Solid Snake. So being a special operatives guy, Rika isn't really known for having a personality, basically. And Search Man kind of as well. So our big thing is that we find upon their mission of what they're doing, <clears throat> finding evil navvies in the dark net, under net, and uh, we basically have to get to search man without him freaking aiming and shooting at us, which is a pain in the ass. So yeah, I mean, this one is a lot better than some of the other ones. I mean, it has a lot of atmosphere of us trying to do search man's job a little bit which i do like and the fact that he is shooting at us gives us a little bit of of, of, of being cautious 
It's not like the wood towers or the guards that have laser focus eyesight. And then all, and then afterwards we kind of debate with Rika of how we're better. Yeah. Yeah, Search Man, not gonna lie. One of the better net navvies ever. But you gotta work with your partner and just yeah, not expect them to do everything. So it kind of changes Rika and Search Man a little bit that we see a little bit more in Battle Network 5 a little bit. I'm not going to do it. Okay, fine. Be Kind Rewind. We make videos all the time. For those of you who know that, that movie's from, what that's from, kudos to you. It's an underrated Jack Black movie. We got Viddy and Video Man. Oh, sorry, his full name, Viddy Narcy. Wow. So, <clears throat> Video Man is one of the one of my hardest bosses that I've ever fought in a lot of ways. So basically, Viddy basically says that Video Man is an old, is an older model of Navi, so he doesn't have that much time. So we go into the into the area and try to help him, only for him to screw us and use his ability to basically take our abilities away <coughs> and scatter them throughout the area. Which also reverses our controls, by the way. Where Junkman reversed our stuff when we fought. Video Man does it when we're moving. He also places buttons all over the place. Where if we step on them, we will go back to the start of the area that we're in. And again. The fact that, that it's kind of... Pixel perfect movement in in the Battle Network series. It's kind of hard not to step on them once in a while. But again, if it if it wasn't a lamer a boss, if it was a lamer character uh, scenario, it would have been lower. But I love Video Man. Great character, great scenario. And even after we and also uh for those of you wondering, uh yes, Viddy is a dude. This is a dude. Until he said it when I... <coughs> uh, when I was a kid playing this game, uh, I wouldn't have believed it. Yeah. And then he blames Video Man for the defeat as well. And he really is a... A Pashant actor who is an also Pashant a-hole. Am I using Pashant correctly? I don't care anymore. Next up, we've got one of my favorite net navvies from the anime, who is voiced by one of my favorite voice actors, Inuyasha. I can't remember the dude's name. I hate myself right now. We got Birdman. Okay, yeah, his name was Burner Man originally, but in the anime, but Birdman is better. And his partner, Tetsuya, I think that's his name. I will edit it in here if I'm wrong or anything. So these guys are fire-based fighters, and they are awesome. And they have a bit of rivalry with Mr. Match and Fireman. Seriously, I really wish they'd change his name to Torchman. It's so much better. So they kind of... Uh, they kind of uh, get into a rivalry on the net and the fire from their conflict kind of burns the net a little bit. So we got to go in there and put out some fires and not just their egos. So we find them after putting out a good majority of the fires and everything and we talk them down. That easy. And again, boss fight, one of my favorites. And I love how Fireman and Match just stroke the flames of these guy of these two, their egos. So 
Mr. Match, you always come through for me. I don't know why or how, <clears throat> but you do. All right, number three. This one's actually a pretty fun one. Not going to lie. And it's a scenario with one of my favorite characters from the Mega Man series. You know what? If I ever, if I'm ever doing this list for uh, video game best friend characters, we gotta include Dax and Gutsman, the rival. Okay, yeah, we have Chon and Proto Man as rivals too, but shut up. Gutsman and Dax returning after leaving us in the third game. Wait, wait, wait. Did they leave? He moved for a little bit, but then he returned. Whatever. We get to fight Gutsman again, and this time we have his brother Chisau, who we met in, in the third game. And then uh, we find out that Chisau has been kidnapped and missing. So Dax tells Dan to tells Lan to uh go follow the leads and find Chisau, which after a long, long search, we do. And um First off, I'm gonna be fully honest. I did not see this twist coming. The fact that there was no kidnapping. All of this was just an elaborate plan for Chisau to ha distract Lan long enough to forfeit the match so Dax could win. Because he knows there's no way he could defeat Mega Man on his own. And he wanted his brother to succeed. <coughs> so yeah, this little kid came up with this kidnapping ploy. Just so his brother could win by default. Not going to lie, I thought it was a bunch of Dax's old uh, guys who didn't like Dax before. Who wanted to see him uh, suffer a little bit. So, there's that. And then when Chisau confesses to Dax what happens. Dax says that he wants to fight Mega Man regardless. Because it shows how stronger he is. And how he can improve stronger. And it's a good teaching moment for kids. Yeah, so you're going up against someone who's better at you than someone. So what? If you practice hard enough and if you put in all the work, yeah, you may not beat them immediately, but you'll uh, but you'll get better and better. And this scenario is one of my favorites and why it's number three on this, on this uh, ranking. We got two left and we have not talked about the gal of the game, our pink hero and S. We got roll and mail, guys. Mail? Okay, it is mail. They change it to Mailu th for the anime. Just checking. The future girlfriend and wife of Lan and Mega Man. Oh, why are heroes in these shows and these games so big freaking idiots? Seriously, I think Lan is on board with that, that list of heroes who don't know that someone likes them and they're idiots about it. Seriously, he should join the entirety of the Yu-Gi-Oh! main heroes. Except for except for Yuya, he actually uh, he actually uh, kind of guessed and kind of felt the same. So there's that. Anyway, <clears throat> Mail has entered the tournament, and Lan and Mega Man are a little off put by this that they <coughs> they don't want to go easy. They they don't want to hurt them or go easy on them. That makes Mail and Roll a little mad. And then Roll gets kidnapped by a cyber stalker. Seriously, are, seriously, are we sure this is a kid's game? Because they're touching up on a lot of stuff that, in a, that would be in a lot of other games' uh, genres. 
So after surrounding her by vi viruses and the cyber stalker commenting on Mega Man trying to save her, Roll gets a little touchy on that section about being the damsel again. And uses her abilities to charm the viruses. Good on you, girl. And then she gets a little cold to uh towards uh, Mega Man and everything because he thought she was a damsel, needed to be saved and everything, so that kind of ticked her off. So she asks us to meet her somewhere and challenges us to a game of tag, which not bad, actually. Really, really kind of quick, fun thing. And she pulls out all the stops in her boss fight. I know boss but I said I wasn't going to do... No, you know what? I'm not going to do boss fights. I'll talk about that in another list. And then Mail kind of explains that she entered the tournament because she wanted to impress someone. Land being as dense as Doornail doesn't get it. Mega Man does, on the other hand. I swear to God, Land. I swear to God. Well, at least they end up together anyway at the end. And also, I want to point out... No, you know what? I'll point that out when I do the list. When I do the list. Let's... <clears throat> because number one... There's one left, and... he Tournament scenario, and Mega Man Battle Network 4 is one of my favorite nabbies. One of my favorite operators from both the game and the anime. He, he has appeared... Except in number five. He has appeared in every single game, but this Snabby only appeared in number one. We have Mr. Match and Fireman, two my two favorite characters in the entire series. And this one's really, really good. I'm just mad that the show ruined Mr. Match for me forever because of that Scottish accent that he has. Every time I read Mr. Match's lines, I mean, I, anytime I read the, the play the game and it's the story, I always give the accents and the voices to characters. I can't help but every time <coughs> Mr. Match is on screen, I give that Scottish accent to all the lines. And it just makes me laugh and gives me a warm fire in my heart. It's going to be a great, it's going to be a great fight. I, ca I can't do it well, so well now that I'm sick. Not that I did it well before. But Mr. Match, basically, after meeting him, we're hungry. We go to the hot dog vendor that's outside the stadium. And a fire happens. And we find out there's a virus. Mr. Match fixes it and implies that he put the virus in there. Because sometimes viruses are a good thing. And it heats up the grill and gives it the sizzle. Which I agree and the girl explains that uh, Mr. Match helped her because she was almost out of business because it broke, but Mr. Match fixed it. And then some goons come down in order to uh, to uh, get some protection money from the girl. But Match tells them to get lost, and it's obvious that they were working for him. So when we find Match in uh, Fireman talking to these evil navvies, he makes a comment that the guys are to leave the hot dog vendor alone. So obviously, Mr. Match kind of has a soft spot for the vendor girl, which I really love. And then we get ready for the tournament. And before the tournament, Match reveals his big plan to do his own syndicate and that they've strapped fire bombs to the entire stadium. And he's about to go along, do his plan until... <clears throat> Land being the kind of a nice guy one like told the hot dog vendor about the tournament and that she should kind of you know come in so, out to support Mr. Match. But once Mr. Match notices that she's in the audience, he tells his guys to abort the plan. But they don't listen because they were playing the sabotage backstab him all together. Yeah, Mr. Match was about to go through with this plan. But, there, but the one person who he was actually nice to, he can't hurt her. So 
He tells Lan that there are five bombs in the area. They're in the di in digital devices inside the arena. So we got to find them and destroy them. And then we finish the final one that's inside the terminal of the of the uh of the tournament base. So we do that. And Mr. Match is ready to suffer the consequences of what happens. But considering he did help us, I think we didn't rat him out. And we just got along with the fight. One of the best fights. And Mr. Match kind of rejects the hot dog vendor saying that they're from different worlds. It wouldn't work out. Blah, 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 blah. blah. And you know what? I think it was at this turning point where Mr. Match decided to become a teacher in, in Battle Network 6, Gregor. So I'm happy that my favorite character got a great scenario, a great battle, and development. through. Okay, yeah, in number three, he kind of went back to World 3 and everything. But I'm glad that one of our final story fights with him, he came back. From Fireman to Heat Man to Flame Man to back to Fireman and then back to Heat Man for the for the last one. Mr. Match, you're a great fighter and a great character. And I love that Fireman. I love that that even with my bias, it's a great scenario. It doesn't have a lot of backtracking. It doesn't have a lot of irritating sections. It has a great story that fits for Mr. Match. And that's why he's my favorite of these tournament scenarios. As shit as, Ma as Bound Network 4 was, these scenarios basically kind of saved it a little bit. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys enjoyed the list. I really hope you do. Ah. Uh... Now, hopefully, I'm feeling better for next week because I'm not, I can't, I, I hope, uh, what's next? If we were meant to fly, we'd have propellers on our heads or jet engines on our backs. That's your hint. This is Gamer K, logging out.